reminder for myself on Abdul Raji, Sadaif, and Miskeen, Uzzal, and Jahal. And we are still in existence, but for the grace of God's rahmah and mercy be upon us, Ya Allah, oceans of infinite rahmah that dresses the servant and coming through the Eid al Adha and the events of faith and the days of pilgrimage and the reality of Arafah and the pinnacle of Hajj that the event of sacrifice and sacrificing oneself, sacrificing property, sacrificing wealth, sacrificing time is the pinnacle of faith. As they say all of Hajj one reality and all of Hajj reality can be found in Arafah and the events of Arafah is the Hajj. And the reality of the Hajj, the secret of the Hajj means that all these actions of faith and all the years we've described, what is the reality of the tawaf, the jamara, all these different events are the symbols of our faith and iman. And the pinnacle of that iman then comes to Arafat. And Arafat is that once Sayyidina Ibrahim was given the order to sacrifice Sayyidina Ismail and that all he had done all his life of sacrifice and service to Allah is a reminder that it's never ending. That Allah we don't do and we achieve something and then it's finished but Allah is continuously testing continuously sacrificing and asking the servant to sacrifice and that is the reality of faith. So when they say that Arafah is, is Hajj, the awliyaullah come into our lives and begin to push into our heart its immense reality that our life is about sacrifice, our life is about sacrificing my time, sacrificing my wealth, sacrificing everything that I have of an ability, of an understanding. Whatever it is it has to be in the way of Allah and His beloved Sayyidina Muhammad And that becomes the life of the shaykh in which they sacrifice their time, they sacrifice the knowledge in which they achieved. They didn't achieve that easily, that they gave everything in that way. They gave all their time, all their effort. They didn't see even their children being raised up because continuously on the road, continuously doing all the things that Allah wanted for them. And that was the life of service and that's the reality of the pilgrimage. That this service and what we say khidmat opens rahmah. So that is the khidmat, that is the service to Allah is that when I have an ability and I give it in the way of Allah because that's what Sayyidina Ibrahim was teaching, I give everything. When Allah wanted my wealth I gave all my sheep away, when Allah wanted my time I gave all my time away. And all that He wanted was this child all his life. 90 years praying for that child to be born. And when the child was born after a few years Allah said, okay we want Sayyidina Ismail too. So it never, it never stops this station of Islam, the station of Iman, Maqam, Ihsan and the immensity of its reality that we are a people that continuously sacrificing in the way of Allah that people sacrifice time because they could have been doing something, working, doing something to, to earn a living and they stop to listen to the zikr, listen to the events, listen to the teachings. This is what brings the perfection of faith. That's why that when we follow the turuqs they keep teaching khidmat, khidmat. And that is the khidmah that from the time I have I'm going to give in the way of Allah from the skills I have, from the ability I have, from everything. And to continuously train ourselves not to be proud of it, 
don't think you did something for the center, for your faith, for anything and anyone owes you anything. Because that was only for you and your soul and your grave. Had you not wanted to do it, Allah would have replaced you with 10,000, 10 million other people. So don't ever think and never let pride enter to what we do. You think you're a shaykh, a big shaykh, there are 10,000 other people coming up every day, they won't also be shaykh, Allah take your title away and throw the next one. Everyone in this arena is easily replaceable because Allah is a wajjal. So means that the awliya come into our life that don't be proud. Don't be proud of your service, don't be proud of what you gave, don't be proud of the time that you commit, don't be proud of anything because this was Allah's rahmah and mercy to you. That He chose out of these seven billion people on this earth, He chose you, chose me. And that's what's astonishing that Ya Rabbi chose me to be of service. And I pray every day that Ya Rabbi give me a strength to be and to be worthy of that service, to have the ability to continue that service when every day is difficult and every day becomes more of a struggle and there's so much outside pressure and oppression that is unimaginable to, to stop the service, to stop all of the abilities, stop everything and shaitan would just make everything to be easier if he would stop. Because anyone who bears a flag for realities in a filthy dunya, imagine that you, you think of the scariest place on earth with the most horrific type of criminals and say, so I'm going to take a flag that's made out of gold and diamonds and I'm going to run through this crowd and try to get to the end of it surviving. And that's the equivalent of coming into this dunya and bearing the Muhammadun Rasulullah flag in which to love the Prophet more than we love ourselves to teach about the realities, to represent the realities, to go out and give charity in the way of the realities, to be ambassadors of that reality. It's an immense flag of light. And only with the difficulty everything has to be built and every day shaitan tries to stop it. And we pray for the himma and the zeal to complete that we need to complete. Only by Allah's immense mercy that He grant a, a victory. So it means that struggling in this way is never easy and that everything around pushes to stop, pushes to stop every type of obstacle from every direction. It's a push to stop what you do just to make the field better for shaitan. Even from within the family of the tariqah, within the family of this reality at every inch and every corner is a difficulty. So there is no ease in reaching our faith and completing our faith. And Prophet described in the last days that it would be like holding hot coal because the, the zeal, the love is there, understanding what needs to be done is there but just difficulty from every direction is continuous in life. So whoever is feeling what we are saying then knows that that is the path. The difficulty shaykh, will it stop? Never. Will, will everybody and their anger subside? Never. We said before that even for Imam Hussain as salam they slaughtered the family, the grandson, the immense light, these realities. Why? Because of the illumination and the light that he represented in salam. Because they said, as long as you're on this earth they won't take bayat with us and better if we 
kill you than to keep you. And that is a, a history and anyone who understands history understands the future. Anyone who understands history, say if you don't know what and where you came from, you don't know where you're headed to and that's in, in ignorance. So tariqah comes and awliyaullah come into our life, Ahlul Bayt come into our lives that remember our history because history just repeats itself. There's nothing new under the sun. So anybody whom is struggling in the way of that life and in the way of that love and to represent that reality of the respect and love of the holy family, the holy companions and to be complete in the love and respect of both the companions and the family and then to dispense acts of illumination with knowledges and realities and teachings. That shaitan's not happy with that, the shaitan is fiercely trying to close that from every direction. And we pray that Allah give a himma and a strength in which to do what we have to do so that that tap remains open and that people can drink and to feel the reality of that tap and that reality, to quench their soul from that reality and to have a, a safety for themselves on this dirty earth and all its distractions that Allah opened a a pond of kawtha To, to drink from it to be blessed from it to be illuminated from it is a immense blessing don't know the value of that blessing until it's gone. We don't understand what Allah has given to us until it's not there. And that's why we, we keep praying that Allah keep that tap open, keep that fountain to be open, keep his blessings and his nama to be flowing and that the nazar and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad to intercede in Surukullahu Nasran Aziz inna fatanaka fatan mubeen li akhiraku Allahumma taqaddam adam bika ta'akhar li utama nahmati wa alayka fi siratul mustaqeem wa yansurukullahu nasran aziza wa yansurukullahu nasran aziza wa yansurukullahu nasran aziza that Allah's mighty support to dress us and bless us against every type of difficulty and every type of maneuvering that makes this dunya to become more and more difficult in days of darkness. That in times of difficulty these fountains of life become more and more harder to reach. The ponds become hidden and that kawthar becomes more and more difficult to find. We've seen in our own life how certain taps are harder to reach. Certain realities are no longer spoken about 
certain haqqaiqs are no longer talked about and that's you see the you can't say that they dry up because their hearts are never dry but Allah begin to hide those taps, hide those fountains in which the believers no longer hear that reality anywhere. And that becomes you know from the teachings of, of Prophet that in the last days only Allah would be hidden and that the time of dajjal and deceit would be so immense and its darkness would be so filled that the immensity of that fitna wherever someone is sitting is better than even standing. Even the act of standing he enters into a difficulty. And we pray that Allah grant us a means in which to be safe from the immensities of that fitna and that difficulty that mankind bring upon themselves. That when people create a fitna from even holy people, when they create a fitna and create a difficulty, it, even within Allah's will something will then collapse and close. And as a result then that tap is, is no longer available and accessible to the people. We pray that Allah grant us a strength, grant us an understanding, grant us to from the realities that are accessible to us now to absorb them, to eat them and drink them, to bring them into our, our reality so that we nourish them and it becomes a means of our survival in days of difficulty. What we are acquiring now of spiritual knowledges and spiritual teachings, these are a salvation for the soul and to presume that it'll always be available and that I catch you on the next round is ignorant. In our life we've seen the taps one after another begin to close and close and the one who comes after no longer speaks that way, no longer teaches that way. And you see that the tap closed and then more and more darkness illuminates the earth and that's the immensity of the difficulty. The purpose of the books was not to glorify oneself and, and put images on a cover but to know. that was given and put upon the website. A day may come when that website is not available. And these knowledges <coughs> that were entrusted vanish. And for the sake of that reality that to put them into print so that they are safeguarded by virtue of print and that whom has them Allah has destined for them to have it. That becomes the work of the shaykh, the trust of the shaykh. And the earth in which he arrived was in one shape and what Allah gives of a blessing and a ni'mat and a trust that that trust was dispensed. That when Allah asked the servant, what was given to you, did you give to the people back? And they qalu bala, they said, to the best of our ability Ya Rabbi we dispensed what needed to be dispensed. So our life was in that understanding that we don't take anything for granted and don't think that everything will always be there. This world is and its history is evident that everything changes, things collapse, things fall apart and things are not available and we try our best to safeguard what was put out and the knowledges that were dispensed 
so that the souls that needed to benefit from it, benefit. And we pray that Allah raise us with its trust and raise us with its blessings and grant to us his oceans of forgiveness and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and that complete his favours upon ourselves, our family and our communities and prepare us for the arrival of Sahib al Waqt Sayyidina Muhammad and Mahdi salam to be worthy of his companionship, to be worthy of being in his support, to be of support and to give from our life and from our time and from our abilities to that holy reality. That Allah give us a life in which to see that with our physicality and if not with our physicality definitely with our spirituality to be amongst those men of light and to accomplish what Allah created us to accomplish. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaam wa mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basira Surat al-Fatiha.